Welcome to Wii U Quick Reviews, the show where I review any Wii U game as quickly as possible. Today's game is... Let's get started. Nintendo is truly a master of all genres. Just when we thought we'd seen them try everything though, they surprised fans with the release of Splatoon, a competitive shooter of all things. In classic Nintendo fashion, it had some kid-friendly twists. The main mechanic is based around your playable character, a kid capable of transforming into a squid, called an inkling. In kid form you can shoot ink of your team's color with various weapons like standard guns, rollers, sniper rifles, and gatling guns, and use sub-weapons which include various types of throwable bombs and some other specialties. The turf you cover also fills up a meter for your special move, an all-powerful ability that can turn the tide of the match in just a few seconds. In squid form you can swim around in the ink spread by you and your teammates, but be careful of ink spread by the opposing team, as it will slow you down. The key to winning matches is learning how to swap back and forth between these two forms with speed and purpose. These mechanics are then used creatively in the four competitive modes provided by Splatoon, where two teams of four players each face off. There's the one casual mode called Turf War, where the objective is to cover as much of the area with ink as possible. The winning team is the one with the higher percentage of turf covered with their color of ink at the end of the match, so combat isn't a focus here, although it can keep the opposing team from doing all that much. Combat and the temporary elimination of other players, or splatting of other players as the game likes to call it, becomes a much bigger focus in Splatoon's three ranked modes. There's the payload-based Rainmaker and Tower Control modes in which you need to move the all-powerful Rainmaker weapon or stand on the tower in order to get it farther into enemy territory. And the Splat Zones mode, where you need to maintain control of one or two points on the map by keeping them covered in your team's ink. These modes require much different thinking than the standard Turf War with a focused objective that benefits from proper weapon choice and skilled combat. The ability to jump to any of your teammates with the map on the Wii U gamepad also allows for a lot of strategy. Sometimes a jump can quickly get you back into the game after you've been splatted, but sometimes it'll lead straight into a death trap. You can also set up private matches, but what are the chances that you even know someone who still has a Wii U? Clothing and weapons can also be purchased with in-game currency to augment your abilities, but they're certainly not a necessity. The base weapon has a completely fair shot of winning matches given Splatoon's balanced state, and the buffs offered by clothing are minimal enough that a skilled player shouldn't have to worry about them if they'd rather not. But none of it matters. Going a bit out of order from a usual quick review, and heading straight to the switchability factor, we can see that Splatoon is in fact on the Nintendo Switch console in the form of its sequel, Splatoon 2. So the only reason to ever buy Splatoon 1 from an online standpoint is a few exclusive maps, weapons, sub-weapons, and specials. And with the death of the Wii U's online play and ever-looming possibility, it's hard to even recommend Splatoon 1 over Splatoon 2 for its lower price. However, Splatoon 1 does offer its own unique single-player content. There's a story mode campaign which involves getting back the giant fish that powers the entirety of Splatoon's hub area, and it takes you through 27 stages and 5 boss battles. That may seem like a lot, but it unfortunately will only take you about 3 hours to finish all of them, with minimal reason to return, as each stage only offers one hidden collectible for you to locate. Every stage is well designed to teach you about the mechanics of the multiplayer mode, giving you strategies for combat and movement, as well as utilizing some platforming elements that are completely absent from the competitive side of Splatoon. In addition, there's multiple Splatoon amiibo that unlock additional challenges for the single player mode, allowing you to take on levels with weapons other than the standard blaster you're normally provided. These amiibo still run pretty expensive for what they offer though. The pros and cons this time around are pretty simple. Splatoon 1 offers a lot of multiplayer content, but essentially nothing that Splatoon 2 doesn't offer. There's unique fluid gameplay, as well as a charming art style and aesthetic, but Splatoon 2 once again has the same thing. Miiverse support has been removed from Splatoon 1, and oddly enough, Splatoon 2 even has a replacement for that. The servers for Splatoon 1 certainly aren't dead by any means, but the possibility of a Wii U Wi-Fi shutdown makes the game a risky investment for those wishing to play online and unfortunately, it is impossible to recommend Splatoon 1 for its single player mode alone, given its short length of a few hours and price tag of roughly $20. Overall, Splatoon for the Wii U is a risky investment. This is one that you're going to want to pick up on the Nintendo Switch if you have the ability to, and if you really want to play those single player levels, just wait until Nintendo stops supporting the Wii U's Wi-Fi and the price drops. Oh yeah, it also has local multiplayer, but uh wants you to play with this abomination. <laughs>